And I remember that in 2016 to the idea, this is like, uh, just to, to put the context of what I'm saying, it's like the good side, right? I don't have this intention of like, you know, I'm not a troll farm and I'm not trying to create misinformation. But on the other hand, it did exist, right? That in 2016 specifically, and with regard to the election, we began to see these troll farms, these darker side of, of, of bots mentioning stuff that was misinformation. So uh, the way, because I say this, because it, they were reports that were Russian troll farms saying, you know, this campaign, am I, am, am I wrong at all? Because I see your reaction. Well, uh, sorry, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, you're not wrong that there were those reports, but all of them turned out to be completely completely compromised and uh and discredited i mean I, i'll walk through it for, for yes so yeah. they the institutions that made the, those forensic those they, they call them digital forensic investigations yeah you know, the idea of forensics is a crime scene investigation and digital forensics firms are the firms that go in and they you know they sort of deduce how a narrative started and who were the accounts and actors and the network connections and what happens when you trace their IP addresses? Every single aspect of the of the Russian troll farm narrative was complete, completely worthless from top to bottom. I'll, we'll, we'll just go through like the, the list. From so, first of all, there were these Justice Department uh, 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 indictments of the Internet Research Agency. You know this this uh, Prigozhin uh, source. You know Internet troll farm is what we were told it was. They indicted 13 individuals. The Justice Department actually dropped those cases uh, two years after they filed them when the defendants who didn't even need to defend themselves because they were Russian, they didn't need to appear in U.S. court or file a defense motion. When two of the defendants actually uh, uh, responded to the to the indictment and were, uh, were on the cusp of winning discovery motions for how it is that the U.S. government decided they were troll farms. The Justice Department immediately dropped the case, saying if they had to disclose how they knew they were Russians, then it would undermine U.S. national security, and so it's not even worth trying to prosecute the case. You then you got the actual forensic identification with themselves. They were done by firms like Graphica, by firms like New Knowledge, and by firms like uh, like the Atlantic Council Digital Forensics Research Lab, and others who have all been busted identifying humans as bots. You know, there was a guy named Ben Nimmo who worked for both Grafka and the Atlantic Council DFR lab who you know, made a big deal about these accounts being Russian bots. And then they all started going on TV and, uh, and saying, actually, hey, my name is Ian. I'm a real person. I don't know why this US government funded, Pentagon funded, uh, you know, digital forensic shop identified me as a human. They were using totally rigged methodology. They were saying if someone was spewing anti-NATO talking points or pro-Corbinite in the UK or pro-Trump in the US, and they tweeted with a frequency of 50 or more times a day, then they were a presumptive bot. Now, it gets even worse because it turns out they themselves, they, the people who were doing these digital forensics, were the ones creating Russian bot farms. I'll give you an example. I talked earlier about an individual named Rene DeResta who who recently called to abandon the distinction between mis and disinformation. Now, she's a former Central Intelligence Agency veteran. She worked for the CIA. She's currently at the Stanford Airnet Observatory, which is essentially a, a government cutout university center. She previously wrote the report on Russian disinformation. Wrote her, her firm, New Knowledge, wrote portions of that Senate Intelligence Report, which is the official you know, uh, proof it said, of Russian interference in the 2016 election. Two years later, after she wrote that report, it came out that her own firm, New Knowledge, of which she was the technical director, was busted bogging Russian bots. Okay, they you can look this up. The New York Times, the Washington Post all report on this. They bought a bot farm with 23,000 fake accounts uh, uh, so that it would look like it was coming from Russia. It was They used VPNs to simulate Russian server access. They mass subscribed them to a Republican U.S. senator named Roy Moore in the special election in November 2017. While she was being funded by Democrat operatives, her firm literally created a fake Russian bot farm. This is the person deciding what are, is and is not Russian bots. 
Then they mass subscribed them to their political opponents and then told the mainstream media that those Republicans were being backed by Russian bots, that they themselves were created and they got busted doing it. And then she went on to be, you know, the, this uh, this figure partnered with the Department of Homeland Security to censor the 2020 election and to censor COVID-19. So every single one of the of the the data points that we have heard about Russian disinformation have been discredited, both at the at the forensic level and at the actual messenger level of who's who's the one making these determinations. And what's worse is that they pivoted from that false fake predicate of Russian disinformation to straight up domestic misinformation with, you know, you don't even need a Russian predicate now, right? I mean, it, all that censorship started with this idea of a national security threat from Russian trolls and, and bot farms when they couldn't find anybody, when the U.S. government was leaning on the Twitter trust and safety teams and YouTube and Facebook to find these Russians that they couldn't find, half of whom were supporting Black Lives Matter, by the way, were supporting leftist groups. And they had to, and I'm not making this partisan, but they had to come up with this idea, well, if they're supporting both the right and the left, then they must be just trying to divide people. So they're coming up with this scheme that even if they support Hillary Clinton, even if they support, you know, even if they support both sides, then it, that's somehow supporting Trump, even if they support the opposition to Trump. That, so the whole thing to me is, is fake and discredited, and I don't assign any legitimacy to it whatsoever. Wow. That's, that's, that's really really insightful and honestly it's one of the first moments ever since i adopted this idea that you know there were russian troll firms in 2016 that i hear these counter these factual counter ideas and it's just it's not out there it, it really and they knew it they knew i'm sorry to interrupt but they knew this at the time i was watching these state department officials travel across the atlantic and say we need a predicate okay Yes, I know it's not Russians who are supporting the Five Star Movement in Italy. It's not the Russians who are primarily backing Brexit or Marine Le Pen in France. But we need some intervening step because we've got two and a half centuries of free speech, diplomacy, and, and doctrines in the West. People are not going to accept censorship on space. We need some sort of measure that we can loop in, that we can create. A, you can use a counterintelligence predicate for all this. They were talking about that in their own conferences in 2017. And then even at the scale, I just have to say one more data point. You know, there was only about $100,000 in Facebook ads that were ever identified coming from, you know, from Russians is what it was said. $100,000. That's one single middle class salary in the U.S. Hillary Clinton spent $1.3 billion on the, on the U.S. election. If $100,000, one person's salary is enough to shift an entire election then we've got problems far beyond. I mean, even if you accept at, you know, at face value, what I've already said is, is should not be accepted. You know, this is something that a court would say you would dismiss on summary judgment, because even if you accept their facts, it still would not rise to the level of any sort of material interference. So I'm sorry, I just back to you. I'll no, no, that, that's okay. 